Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. They were just before judgment and not had to be entered. Yeah, before I come to the concerns of the, 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 the listeners, it's important that I deal with what the law provides. So at any stage before the judgment, it can be tomorrow upon taking plea today, then maybe the commencement of trial commencement of trial is tomorrow. This particular knowledge can be entered by the DPP. Now that is the power that you and me have given the DPP. Which power can only be changed through an amendment. In the absence of those amendments, the situation will remain the same. This is why it is important for me to mention that. By the way, let me also tackle the other question people have been asking. I I I, I dealt with it in passing, I think, on Prime TV last night. We are saying, hey, how come the, the, the way it's written is showing a subordinate court? The reason is in uh, subsection 2. Okay? What is happening there is that uh, the subordinate court is where this particular accused was uh, committed from. Okay? The matter was before the subordinate court. There are two situations or possibilities that take place. Because once a matter of more years because you have for example seven nine years at the subordinate court as the highest sentence that a subordinate court would slap on someone so if you appear before the subordinate court on a matter that require a sentence more than its jurisdiction they will refer you to the high court but you will take plea at the subordinate court so when writing this particular decision or 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 or, or, or writ the dpp will write to a court that committed you and not the court that uh, did the part of trial. And so that is the reasoning of uh, the DPP's uh, bits. So for those people that were questioning why it's appearing like that, it's taken care of by section, uh, subsection uh, 2 of section 81 of, um, of uh, the, the, the CPC. Perhaps uh, uh, see someone sent an SMS that uh, why didn't you read it? I know you can take it for granted that people have the document when they do not have it. Okay, fine. Let me read it. Uh, subsection 2 says, If the accused shall not be before the court, when such knowledge prosec is entered, the registrar or clerk of such shall sh such court shall forthwith cause notice in writing of the entry of such knowledge prosec to be given to the keeper of the prison, in which accused may be detained, and also, if the accused person has been committed for trial to the subordinate court by which he was committed, and such subordinate court shall forthwith cause a similar notice in writing to be given to any witnesses bound over uh, to prosecute and give evidence unto their sureties, if any, and also to the accused and his sureties in case he shall have been admitted uh, to bail. And then the issue is you write to the court that committed you. But let me quickly deal with the concession, then I go to address the concerns of members of the public. Uh, the, the, the starting point is what is in the law. Uh, the Article 180, sub-Article 4C of the Constitution of Zambia provides, by the way, the DPP's office is established uh, by Article 181. Uh, so, under this one, sub-Article 4C, the constitution says the director of public prosecutions may discontinue at any stage before judgment is delivered criminal proceedings instituted or undertaken by the director of public prosecutions or another person or authority. End of quote. So the problem here is at any stage. If citizens believe that this particular uh, position is very bad, which says at any stage, you are free to amend the constitution. But under the circumstances, that's how it is. And now this gives rise to people beginning to believe that uh, this uh, decision was, uh, you know, ill-informed. Because why have you allowed the person to remain there for many, many days and then they only come to enter in order before the judgment? If that is what the law says, from the point of law, there is nothing wrong. 
But when you look at the moral aspect, people always raise those concerns, as we have raised before. You may recall that a similar situation took place. Uh, generally, murder cases take long, and they take time to set the dates at the High Court. Okay? That is a challenge with murder cases. I think if you check through many of the murder cases, they take long. Uh, and uh, in some cases, not only murder cases, certain cases also, depending on uh, certain extenuating factors, they may have to necessarily take uh, long. You may recall the situation uh, uh, of um, of Malitata. Okay? It's non -bearable. The challenge that we have with this particular charge is that it's non -bearable. If it was bearable, immediately the person appeared for plea. The counsel to the defense could have applied for a bail. Unfortunately, if it borders on a murder case and then you've been jointly charged until such a time when the prosecution believes and the court believes that the core accused has sufficiently provided the necessary information alongside the prosecution of the principal offender. In this case, we may be talking about Shebi, though they were jointly charged. Now, if it's the same principle, you may ask again, why has it taken so long for the trial to come to an end? The challenge with the murder case is that when the co-accused seems to have so much information that border on a, 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 a murder case, they will remain in custody for as long as the co-accused uh, testimonies may remain relevant. That is a challenge. It would be perhaps a, a justifiable position if Shebi was convicted within one month, then Honorable Mumbipiri remains in custody. Then we should have had many questions to ask. So the cases now, had to be concluded at the same time? Yeah, because they are jointly charged. That, that, that is the understanding from the point of law. But I'm, I'm getting to the concerns of the people. Yeah, because yeah. we have to move on as well, uh, yes. Mark. We have other things to discuss. But of course, uh, this is a matter that has just been raised. So obviously, we it's can't... It's important yes. that we do justice to it also. Mm -hmm. Because it borders also partly on the emotions of the people. Obviously, we should not take it uh, as business as usual. Mm. From the comments and calls of the people, you can actually tell where the discussion is centered. So I thought that it would be important for me to just end my thought by indicating that the challenge with murder cases, if you go uh, to court today it's on murder cases, there are some people that you may be calling, they will tell you uh, that some of their relatives they were charged for murder and they are still in custody. Some cases go as, as, as long as two years. Especially if the co accused position has a serious bearing on the matter, the substantive matter. And um, the, the challenge that we are presented with, like I indicated, is that if you have a bad law, there is nothing you can do about it apart from amending it. Now, a bad law is a bad law when it comes to Honorable Mumbipiri. It is also a bad law when it comes to Mariteta. It should also be a bad law when it comes to HH. It must be a bad law when it comes to those people who were political prisoners. Where you had Matambo, you had Musichiri in custody for vote protection. Then they are given trumped up charges and they remained there until, I think, for the first time in the history of this country. Two years ago, over two years ago, in the previous uh, government, they entered many knowledge than any other government that ever ruled this country in a very short space. I think I was talking about it one time again. Mm. Citizens came to understand the word nole prosec at that time. It was, there were so many arbitrary arrests. Now, herein lies the problem. In a nole, nobody says a person was not going to be convicted. Nobody also says a person, they did, they did not have sufficient evidence, so they had to discontinue. That's a problem with the knowledge. The, the other possibility could be that also that the co-accused could have been convicted on a lesser charge. Then they have to make a decision. Do you think this is right for us to proceed this way? If we go ahead to deliver the, the judgment, she may be a, convicted for manslaughter. What is the remedy? Let us enter a knowledge. 
That's one possibility. The other possibility, which is very popular, is where people and everyone assume the reason why they are to enter a knowledge is because they have no evidence. Now, these are the two possibilities of who? Of a knowledge. Number one, based on the, on the standing, public standing of an individual, where they have, an, they have lived, stayed there for a very long time, and they believe that's punishment enough, therefore the DPP feels, I think the right thing is let's enter in only. This is enough. Is it right that this person should be convicted for a lesser charge? I don't think it's right. Let's take this angle. Now that is the remedy that comes. And that's the power that is exercised by the DPP. And from the point of law, that power, can, the question is, can the power be a cha cha challenged? If it, it has been exercised excessively or and procedurally, it can be challenged. The, diff the challenge which we are, we are confronted with is that uh, the DPP's office obviously must be held with integrity. But again, this particular, as you could see from section 81, subsection 1, the matter can be renewed in court. So the consequences are that today, if people thought that, uh, if, if the DPP believes they are on firm ground and they are unfairly being uh, criticized, they can take back the matter to court. If they take back the matter to court, what are the consequences? It means only BP will have to go back to prison. So those are the consequences. All right, and obviously uh, people have heard um, uh, Mark. It was yeah. a, a public concern, but of course, yeah, it's, uh, need to do that. Yeah, it's, it's also important that it people... It's a bad law. It's not a good law at all, because uh, the, the attributes of a good legal system is rapid adjudication. Obviously, our constitution has got a lot of uh, <laughs> things to be amended. Remember, the um, elected twice, is on in twice, versus the three years of, you know, uh, being in government, and uh, which declared the president Ed Galung um, uh, eligible to contest yeah, and those are, uh, <laughs> those are other things that we can actually discuss yeah. uh, our constitution needs to be uh, worked on mm -hmm. but of course uh, Mark, uh, last week um, um, uh, we had um, uh, you know the democratic summit uh, maybe let's just get to look at uh, the importance of that uh, democratic summit yeah and um, I think the, the, the question obviously also in addition to the question that you've asked would be that what was central in that particular summit. Number one, the fight against corruption. Number two, the rule of law. Number three, human rights. Number four, democracy. Hinged on those four pillars. So let me deal with one at a time. Are these pillars critical? Yes, they are. To the extent that they also punctuate a successful democratic dispensation. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.